Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the place to go if you're looking at building a website. The Ninja 5. It's one of those pieces of gear where it sits in your cart for a while, it's a lot of money, you um and you are about buying it, you really don't want to spend that much money, and then you get it and you instantly regret not purchasing it sooner because I don't think I could live without this thing now. I'm not gonna be reviewing this today, more just running you through what I've been using it for. A lot of features you might not necessarily know about, things I didn't know about, they're actually coming in really useful. And just the core functionality of how it really works because you really don't understand it until you get it in your hands and start using it. So if you just wanted to use this as a straight recorder as well as a monitor, it's really easy to use. And the signal comes straight out of the camera, straight into the monitor, and there's a red button here. If you tap that red button, you see there's now a red box around the outside of the screen. That means it's now recording the signal from the camera. And I'm actually not even recording anything on the camera directly now. It's just taking the signal and recording it to the Atomos Ninja 5. If you want to stop recording, you just tap that again, and now it's recorded that clip for you. The nice thing is that it is actually pre-rolling as well, a few seconds prior to you hitting that, all the time. So what that means is, Yes, when I hit that, it's starting recording now, but it actually recorded a few seconds prior to that as well, which can sometimes be really useful. The big red box on there is something that I wasn't sure about to begin with, but now I absolutely love it because you can just quickly glance down or just in the corner of your eye, see the red box and know that it is recording. The other nice thing as well that it has on the back there, a tally light. So the tally light flashes red when it is recording. If I was to stop recording now, the tally light stops flashing. So a tally light is a really useful feature because you're often recording yourself or you have it out that way and you just want to see if you're recording. All cameras should have a form of tally light now on the front and on the back, in my opinion. Another crazy thing about this that you might not know about, if I take the memory card out right here, of course, because it's just taking the signal, I don't even need a memory card in the camera to record which means you don't have to be limited by the space. Like this is a 64 gigabyte memory card. I often use 128 gigabytes as well, but the hard drive in this is one terabyte. So you are now removed from the limits of whatever storage media you were using. That also leads me to my next point, which is because you're just taking the signal from the camera and you're not actually using the camera's record functionality, you can record as long as you want. There is no limit to the recording time now. So this is the A6400 that I'm shooting on right now, which doesn't have a record limit, but the A7 III I'm shooting on right now does have a record limit of 29 minutes and 59 seconds. The US R, same thing. So whichever camera you have this now plugged into, it allows you to record as long as you want, basically until your battery runs out or the camera overheats. I don't really have any issues with overheating. So with the A7 III, you could leave it plugged in all the time as long as this is plugged in all the time, you can record for hours and not have any issues with it. If you think about it, the main thing that's gonna cause the camera to overheat is when you're recording. If you're just taking the signal from the camera going into the Ninja 5 and recording that method, technically you're not putting a lot of stress on the camera and it shouldn't really overheat. So something else to consider. Another nice thing to think about is if you have a camera that has, let's say one card slot, like the EOS R there, you might be a little bit wary, skeptical about just using a camera with one card slot. So if I was to plug the Atomos Ninja 5 into the EOS R, I could record on the camera and to the Atomos Ninja 5, and that's technically a backup. So if you have a camera with one card slot, it pretty much solves that issue. The Ninja 5 does have all the core functionality of a regular monitor as well, so you can preload LUTs onto it. It has histograms, focus peaking. You can de-stretch using a anamorphic lens this one here I've been shooting with recently. Can't tell you what it is, but you'll soon see. But my favorite thing I've actually been using is the zoom. Now, let's see here. So zoom is off, turn the zoom back on. You can now drag around and see exactly what is in focus in any frame. And it's really smooth. It works pretty much like the touch screen on an iPhone does. So that is really useful when you're trying to nail focus with a manual focus lens. Again, been shooting with this, it's a manual focus lens. I'm using the D-stretch and I'm using the zoom to make sure my focus is perfect. Before we go any further, let's talk about today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. I'm sure you've heard of them before. I personally use Squarespace. I actually used them before they even started sponsoring videos with myself. I trust their websites. They're really easy to set up. I set up mine under two hours, just pick one of their really nice templates and I was good to go. If you get confused, I mean, you probably won't, but if you do, they have great 24 seven customer service as well. I wanna show you something about Squarespace that I don't see a lot of people talking about, and that's the fact that you can actually edit all of your website on your phone. There's a Squarespace app and you can go in and change things on the fly. So for example, right now, let's, uh, I'll record my screen here so you can see. So my website right now, chrisbrockhurst.com says, hello Brockhurst, I just changed that. 
if we go to the Squarespace app, we can click on edit on that page there and I can just change this to literally say Chris, as it's meant to, hit done, save. Now let's go back to Safari. Let's reload that. And now it says Chris Brocker. So you can make changes just like that on the fly as and when if you're out and about, you need to quickly make a change, you can do that. So that's something I don't hear a lot of people talk about. And it's something to consider if you are looking at building a website. I do of course host my store on here as well. My presets are all available for sale there. They're 10 bucks. If you're watching this video, I'm gonna drop them to five for you. So if you want them, they're there. So the Squarespace app works really well if you're looking at editing your website on the fly. If you don't have a website and you're looking at signing up for one, head to squarespace.com, sign up for a free trial, and when you're ready, use the discount code down below to get a discount off of your first purchase or domain. Something else you might not be aware of with the Ninja 5, you can actually trigger record. And what I mean by that is you can use the camera to control the recording on the Ninja 5. So like when I talked about earlier about you might wanna use this as a backup, you wanna record on the camera still, and this is just your backup. Well, the camera is set up right now so that if I record on there, the tally light is now flashing, the big red boxes around the outside, so it is in fact recording on the Ninja 5 now, as well as the camera. If I was to stop recording on here, stop recording, it stopped recording on there too. So the camera sends a signal to the Ninja 5 to start recording and stop recording when you push the, uh, the record button, which is a really useful feature. So this is of course a recorder as well as a monitor, which means you can go back in and view your video files on a much bigger and much clearer screen than just checking them out on the EVF or on the LCD there. If you push the little green button, the play button or the, the playback button, it now loads up all of the files that you have recorded and you can just skip through them all. And it's super quick, super easy to do. You can see a bunch of stuff that I've been recording on here. I actually think I formatted this recently. You can pause it, you can skip through to a frame. Really useful sometimes to just go back and check, validate what it is that you recorded, look at a specific shot, see how it turned out. So for checking out your video, it's a much better solution than using the screen there, at least in my opinion. Now here's something else I actually was not aware of, is the speed of transferring from the SSD on the back of that directly to the computer. I'm gonna show you just over the top of this, transferring a file, and you will be amazed by how quick it is compared to using an SD card. It's one of the reasons now that I can't not use this. Sometimes you record a video segment, like this video is probably gonna be best part of 30 minutes long before I edit it down. That might be like a 20, 30 gigabyte file. From an SD card, that's normally gonna take, I don't know, six, seven minutes to transfer. With the SSD, it's gonna be, I don't even wanna guess, probably under a minute. But I'll show you, it's really quick. Something else to think about is the monitor on this is 1000 nits, and that is the brightness. So what that means is when you're outside, you'll often find with the Sony screens, you can't really see them outside that well, even with some some decent monitors that you can buy out there, they don't have as many nits as that. This is really easy to see outside, even on an incredibly sunny, bright day, and I don't use any other monitors now. In the studio, I use a few others, like the Feel World ones I still have, the Porky's ones I have, the Best View ones I use. I use them in the studio, but outside, nothing compares to this now. It's just so much easier to see. So for outside shooting, it's a must have. Something else that you might not be aware of, you can record into ProRes on here. I'm not gonna be an expert in claiming to know a lot about ProRes. My knowledge is that it is a much less compressed version of video. So it is a lot bigger, but when you come to edit with it, you just do not have any issues whatsoever. It was buttery smooth editing before on my Mac over there. You can't see it, I don't know why I'm pointing over there. Uh, it was buttery smooth anyway, but now it's extra buttery smooth. Like there is no lag or issues or freezing or anything like that in Final Cut for me when using ProRes from this. So it really does speed up the process of editing and it's another reason I just, I can't not use that now. Something else to think about is this does record in 422 opposed to 420, which means you're getting a little bit more color information. Again, I'm not gonna be an expert on this. Gerald Undone did a video on this, I always reference him, and he basically came to the determination that there isn't a huge amount of difference, if any, to make it easier to color grade. However, that being said, I do find the color from this to be a lot warmer than directly from the Sony camera. So when I've been editing it in Final Cut now, I've actually made a really easy LUT to use, and it, I can get a really nice color from this that I just can't seem to get from the a7 III. Don't know why that is, but yeah, it's really nice. I really actually quite like the color from this and editing it opposed to from the a7 III, so something else to consider. 
sure there's other things I've missed. I've just got lists here that I, I wrote out and I just kind of done this off the cuff, which is not how I normally do a video, but it's very naturally talking about how I actually feel about this. And you can tell, I quite like it. So that is the Ninja 5. I didn't want this to be like a, a review. I don't know if this constitutes being a review. It's more like a, if you're thinking about buying the Ninja 5, these are ways that it will help your workflow. It's helped me out in these ways and it might help you out in these ways as well. So things to think about, probably giving you more of a reason to want it now. I mean, if that's the case, I'm sorry. There is a link down below though, if you wanna go ahead and pick it up. Here's my review, it's great, buy it. That's it. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. See you later. All right, I think that's it today. I'm still recording on my phone screen. That's gonna be a big file, isn't it? Let's just stop that. Wow, that's gonna be a long one. Yes, of course, it's coffee. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the color green? I really like green right now. Green mug, green wallet, green uh, green phone, green liar. I bought my green things down because I just love the color green right now. Look at that. Green, 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 green.